Good afternoon and welcome to Talbot Talks, where we address key issues that face the local church in their kingdom ministry. My name is Steve Jin. I'm the manager of outreach here at Talbot School of Theology. And today I'm joined by Dr. Joanne Jung, professor of biblical studies and the recent author of Godly Conversation. I'm also joined by Chip Rochter, who is a youth ministry worker at Woodbridge Community Church in Irvine, California. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Now, Dr. Jung, I want to address you here first today. Uh, you've done some recent research into small groups. What are some challenges that are facing the local church when it comes to small groups today? Well, first of all, the small group movement is going strong and there are no signs of it letting up. Uh, but I've come across some characteristics of our 21st century small groups, uh, one of which is that they tend to be too polite, um, not really being able to be transparent enough to walk through some of the deeper issues of life together. Secondly, uh, another characteristic is that we, uh, in our small groups, tend to be too biblically illiterate, not knowing enough about God uh, nor His Word to allow His Word to become the litmus test for how we do life. Sure. And Chib, you're at the front line of ministry at your church. Uh, what are some challenges that you've observed in your ministry as you've uh, conducted small groups? Yeah, that's a good question, Steve. I think uh, as I approach the success of small group ministry at, at our church, um, I can identify two questions um, of safety, both the safety of the student and the safety of the ministers involved. Are the students feeling like this is an environment um, that is safe for them to open up about the kinds of things that are really important to them? Are their peers the kind of people they can trust and be around? And are the ministers involved people who are trustworthy and will show them grace and compassion? And secondly, if uh, in the context of ministry, I have one of my students share with me something problematic or hurtful, which is inevitable, will I then feel, wow, I've got to fix this person's life instead of how do I open to the work of the Good Shepherd who is healing us and is the minister in our small groups. Hmm. Uh, as both of you have mentioned some challenges that face small groups, I, I see kind of a unifying theme of transformation. Dr. Jung, what are some practical tips that you can share with our audience today on how our small groups can start to take that, uh, you know, just initial steps towards transformative small groups? Yes, I think some of the initial steps is to begin to cultivate a familiarity with the language of the soul, mm. um, even using the word soul in some of our conversations. And secondly, cultivating a desire to know God, know God in His Word, and allowing His Word uh, to, to be the force behind the transforming power of transformation. You mentioned the word soul, and I dare say, if I were to approach a small group today in any local church, hardly the word is used in, in conversations within small groups. So what's, uh, again, another practical tip, uh, a way a small group member or a small group facilitator or leader can incorporate the language of the actual word soul uh, into just small group curriculum, how we talk to one another, uh, things like that? Well, based on our unfamiliarity of the word soul, it will be a little uncomfortable the first few times that we use it. And there's something that happens when one uses the word soul in a conversation. We can't give those pat answers anymore. We genuinely have to think about our souls, perhaps asking one another questions such as, what is God revealing about himself to your soul? Or as an English Puritan would often ask, what stands now between God and your soul? And so just in incorporating the word soul into questions um, that we may ask one another, it immediately draws us into deeper conversations about what's really going on in the heart of our being. Excellent, excellent. And Chip, uh, some practical tips that you can also share with our audience in regards to how we can go about um, traversing that issue of safety and bringing people in and allowing them to share more deeply. Yeah, as our ministry leaders come in, um, we try and take a long-term approach in that over a period of several weeks and moving onwards that eventually the students will come to feel safe. And some things that lend towards that are connecting with them on a personal level, things about their day or week or that it's going on with them. Um, and that isn't as particularly ministry focused at first, but it's really focused on the person. Uh, I think, you know, if I were to visit a typical small group today at a local church, maybe we've uh, reduced the size of what God can do in small groups and increased the presence of man maybe in small groups. So how can we bring our God back into small groups ministry? Many studies have shown that the typical uh, weekly small group meeting, uh, the 
participants would meet for two hours. And studies have shown the actual time getting into God's Word is about 15 minutes. That's a pretty, pretty short period of time. And it's difficult to incorporate God when we're really not focused on Him or His Word for an extended period of time. Again, I think we, one needs to be intentional about how to format a question about intentionally bringing God into the conversation. Uh, what is God doing in our lives? What is God doing uh, more specifically in our relationships? What is God doing in His relationship with you? And again, bringing that into our conversation in light of Scripture. People who are leaders in the church, they hear, let's say a student shares something really devastating maybe to their lives and they hear this and they have this maybe intention, a good intention to want to fix it, but maybe shove God out of the way. Uh, what are some things that you can recommend uh, in small group ministry to allow God to kind of speak into that area? Sure, you're talking about the anxiety that comes up in youth ministry leaders as um, they're faced with problems and their intentions to help the student. Oftentimes we might take a step that's beyond the boundary, which, uh, which might be helpful to the student. And so dealing with my own anxiety and my own um, embarrassment or um, sort of inner issues on a personal sort of training basis, then when I'm in action and in battle and I'm with a student or I'm doing ministry, then I'm, I would tend to overreact less mm -hmm. and to try to really partner with them and to show them that they're known in whatever is going on in their life mm -hmm. and that I'm communicating to them that I love them by not trying to do too much and neither am I absent at the same time. Great. That seems to be a really good balance between uh, your physical presence being there, but also allowing God to speak into that situation. Yes, absolutely. Great. Tell us and share with the leaders, because there's leaders out there who are leaders of small group ministries at their churches. Uh, what's one thing that they can do tomorrow to initiate a transformative small group ministry at their local church? I think what uh, I have found most important in a small group ministry is the convergence of two elements, and that would be biblical literacy and the attentiveness to one another's souls, to take baby steps toward cultivating that in our language of biblical literacy and our language of taking care of one another's souls. Great, and Chip? Yeah, remember that we're dealing with people and God has built in us this great desire and capacity to be in relationship with each other as this picture of his love and relationality for us. And if we can learn to be with people instead of maybe projects or my work and, and sort of be normal humans again and less uh, programmatic, um, that might be a refreshing way to experience God's love in a small group ministry. Excellent. Well, Dr. Jung and Chip, I want to thank you for joining us today on Talbot Talks. Some of the research that Dr. Jung has conducted is written in a recent book, um, Godly Conversation. Uh, she has conducted this research and written this book addressing the issues that we talked about today, which is transformative small groups. Now, it addresses how the Puritans uh, had this idea of conferencing, and it's their way of meeting as a small group to ask deeper, soul-related questions. So uh, it's a great resource, and we'd love to share it with you. Uh, feel free to contact us anytime. We'd love to send you one. Uh, thank you for joining us here again today. This has been Talbot Talks. And until next time, have a great day.